Ministries thanks you for watching the Bible studies and Christian news and the prophetic teachings. However, if you will just subscribe by clicking the subscribe button, the bell to be notified for the next video study, and then share with others. These videos can go to countries where they are not allowed to even carry a Bible, and this will help save. Hello, Church Saints Seekers. How are you today on July the 8th? This is Pam Gunderson, host of You and Him Ministries Bible Study and Christian Prophetic News. I thought I'd come in today and look at some scriptures with you, but today's readings are 2 Chronicles chapters 19 and 20, Psalms chapter 82 verses 1 through 8, Proverbs chapter 20 verses 29 through 30, Acts chapter 17 verses 1 through 15 for July 12, 2022 on Tuesday. God bless and keep your eyes on the Lord. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and do a little bit of reading here and see if the Lord will speak to us in this community setting where other people are participating by looking at the scriptures with us. So I'm sharing the screen. I'm going to go into where we can plug in a scripture. And let's go ahead first and go into, let's see. Now let's look at Chronicles 11, 2 Chronicles 11. And I am going to use the New King, the New Living Translation. Okay, starting with verse, well, it's the whole chapter. Second Chronicles 11.1. 1. When Rehoboam arrived at Jerusalem, he mobilized the men of Judah and Benjamin, 180,000 select troops to fight against Israel and to restore the kingdom to himself. Prophetically, if we want to look at this, because of what's going on in the White House right now, we might want to gather and mobilize our troops from the four corners of the earth and come against the evil that's going on so that we can restore the kingdom to the Lord. Second uh, Chronicles 11, 2. But the Lord said to Shemaiah, the man of God, say to Rehoboam, son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the Israelites in Judah and Benjamin. This is what the Lord says. Do not fight against your relatives. Go back home. For what has happened is my doing. So they obeyed the message of the Lord and did not fight against Jeroboam. So, do we believe... Let me see how I get this back the way I want it to be. Okay, this is strange. Oh, I see. Do we believe that the Lord is behind the um, Manchurian candidate in the White House? And I will say Manchurian candidate because he really wasn't. Uh, they, 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 they counted the votes, but the votes weren't real. They were for another person, for another party. You may believe that or not believe that. However, we have to realize the Lord allowed this. So quit, you know, are we to uh, um, hear what Shemaiah, the man of God, heard? Uh, go back home? Yes. We need to be in our homes and praying, praying against the evil that we're seeing 
We're seeing a report, I guess it's coming out on the 8th in the, from the White House today, that the unemployment numbers are down and the employment numbers are up. That's not true. Yes, the numbers look like they're up, but you have to realize there are people now that are working two and three jobs because they can't make a living in what they used to make and with one job. Okay, so if you take those numbers in consideration, then you have to realize that the numbers are indeed, uh, employment is indeed down uh, and the number of people that are working are down. Um, I believe, I'm not sure, but I believe I did hear that the um, unemployment numbers for looking for unemployment is up, uh, at least in our state, in the state of Washington. Okay, let's go on. Rehoboam remained in Jerusalem and fortified various towns for the defense of Judah. He built up Bethlehem, Elam, Edom, and Tekoa, Bethzur, Zoko, Adulam, Gath, Barashah, Merashah, Ziph, Adorim, Lakish, Azeka, Zora, Aijalon, Aijalon, Hebron. These became the fortified towns of Judah and Benjamin. Rehoboam strengthened their defenses and stationed commanders in them, and he stored supplies of food, olive oil, and wine. He also put shields and spears in these towns as a further safety measure, so only Judah and Benjamin remained under his control. So let's go back to Second uh, Chronicles 11.11. Rehoboam strengthened their defenses and stationed commanders in them, and he stored supplies of food, olive oil, and wine. Who are our fortified cities in the United States that will fight for the truth and for godliness? Are you in a town that will fight for godliness? Are you a town that will be fortified against the enemy taking over your territory? I live in a state that is very blue. That means very liberal. Um, they have no problem with abortion, the ones that are liberal. We do have uh, conservatives in this state, but I would say that the liberals outnumber the conservatives. I can remember, and this was a pastor at the time who said, I was so surprised when the conservatives voted over here in this county. Well, I didn't ask him how he voted because I didn't, but he was so surprised. Was he speaking out against the liberals or was he speaking for the conservatives? You might want to ask who your authority is in your church what are they voting for what what are their beliefs do they think abortion's okay and do they believe abortion's okay and they can still be a christian ask yourself if you think it's all right to abort babies are you a christian I'm just here to ask the questions. I'm not going to give my opinion about this. I already know what my opinion is. I'm going to take a different spin in the coming days. I'm going to ask a lot of questions. I would hope that you would ask yourself. So do you live in a fortified city? What's your city like? Is your city for or against abortion? Is your city council for or against protecting yourself by fortifying your city. Let's look at this again.
And are you a per okay? Rehoboam strengthened their defenses and stationed commanders in them. He stored supplies, food, olive oil, and wine. Are you storing in your household supplies of food, olive oil, and wine for the coming days that are coming? He also put shields and spears in these towns as a further safety measure. So only Judah and Benjamin remained under his control. Is your city for or against your rights to carry and to defend yourself? When you make a call on 911, does someone come or does no one come? Are you for your city can be just your home? Are you fortifying your home? against the evil that is coming in the coming days? Are you fortifying your home? Do you have safety measures put in place for you and your family? Okay, so I'm going to go on to, I'm going to go back into, okay, why is this here? Okay, I need to get this off of here. Um, actually, that probably wasn't a good idea that I did that. I need that to come back. It's just getting in the way. So let's look at uh, Second Chronicles 12. So let's go to the next one. Okay, Egypt invades Judah, 2 Chronicles 12.1. But when Rehoboam was firmly established and strong, he abandoned the law of the Lord, and all Israel followed him in his sin. Okay. Are you following the leaders of this country in their sin? Do you believe it's sin? Do you believe it is sin in what they're doing? Oh, Sister Pamela, what are they doing? Are your gas prices going up? Are you, do you have, is it easy for you to travel now further away from the town in which you live or to your job? Is it easier financially? to put gas in your car. Is it easier? Did you know, if you haven't been listening to uh, Brighteon or Mike Adams or the people on Brighteon that are giving us some truths, did you not know that the leaders in the White House sent our oil, which we paid for, to other countries. They took our reserves. Did you not know that they took our reserves and they sent them to other countries, in particular, the Dragon Country? Are we to believe that that was a good move? Our gas prices are shooting higher and higher. But then the chief person in the White House yelled at the gas stations and said, quit gouging the people, bring your prices down. Which will uh, kind of cause a problem for the gas stations. I do know that our gas uh, at Safeway was over $5. And suddenly I went to get gas the other day when I came back from Olympia and it was $4.91. And that was without any uh, bonus that they give you for shopping at Safeway. Usually I either get a 10 or a 20 cent discount on each gallon of gas. Well, I I will 
tell you that the car that I am driving right now, I thought it was a mistake and that I shouldn't have done this. I am driving a hybrid. It is an expensive car because of what I need my vehicle to do. Oh, Sister Pamela, you're only one person. Yes, I'm only one person. But what I do have is I have a camper that at some point I may need to move and I need to have a tow package. A little car or any of the cars that they have today are not going to tow my camper or tow it effectively so that I'm safe in case I actually did want to leave the state. Do I want to leave the state? I don't know. Does God want me to leave the state? I won't tell you what I prefer. Today is a day of questions. Do I want to leave this state? Can you answer that question for me with all that is going on? How, however, if you're in a state where God can use you in the anointing or the uh, skills that you have that he can use, then you might want to ask him, does he want you to move or does he want you to stay? Remember, uh, he told Rehoboam, go back home, stay, go back home, don't fight. So I went to fill up my gas tank. I uh, It's 58 miles to and 58 miles uh, uh, back. Plus, I took a side tour because I wanted to have uh, a shoe place, look at my shoes for repair, which was going off the chart about another 10 miles. So we're looking at 58 and 68, 58 and 68 miles. Oops. 58 plus 68 miles. That's 126 miles that I went. And so I thought I better put gas in my car to keep it full. It pumped 1.85 gallons and it was full. Okay, 126. Uh, so uh, 1.85 uh, gallons. I'm not quite sure how to do the math on this, but I paid nine dollars for gas to go 126 miles. So 126 miles. Let's do it this way. Uh, four ninety one. Uh, and so I would divide. Let's just say, uh, say let's just doubled it up. Say it was t uh, times two, divided by one hundred and twenty six. Six hundred eighteen divided by one hundred twenty six. So I essentially paid. Four dollars. Oh, I know. Four ninety-one divided by two plus four ninety-one. So I paid essentially seven dollars and thirty-seven cents to go one hundred and twenty-six miles. Nine dollars all because I kept top topping it off. In the Nissan I was driving, which I know the Lord gave me, I love that car, and suddenly it just isn't functioning anymore. And it's not safe. It's not safe. And I didn't realize how unsafe it was until I started driving the car before this, the Venza, and now this one, uh, which... Okay, I'll just tell you what I'm driving. I'm driving a Highlander. I'm driving a Highlander because it's got six cylinders, two batteries, it's safe, and it will do what I need it to do. It is a work car. It's an SUV. It's a work car. It can go off road. And so in these times, that was the car 
Uh, and so I asked the Lord and I said, oh, did I make a mistake? And I believe I heard the Lord say to me personally, no, Pamela, you did not make a mistake. In the days to come, you will see this car was not a mistake. So I do have some people that are looking at me like, how does she drive that nice a car? It's a limited. It's uh, blueprint blue. It has warm seats. It has everything in a moonroof. Um, it has locked wheels, which means that if I'm in the parking lot, nobody's coming out and suddenly stealing my wheels off of my car. And um, because of everything that's going on, we have this um, supply chain issue. I'm driving a couple days ago, and I this is what came up in my spirit. Wouldn't it be great if you had a rim and a tire in case of emergency? And we in this Highlander, I have a donut. And I think it goes like 60 miles. I wouldn't depend on it to go six miles. I don't like these donuts I, and it, because they cram it into the back of the car. Plus, I have that battery in there now. Um, and I had already told you people about the EMP shield, which seriously, you need to look into. Yes, it's expensive. But it's going to be a lot more expensive in the days to come if you don't get it now while the prices are low, lower, and you can get a discount on it. Now, I just have to find somebody that understands how to put it on. We have it on our home. We have it on the elect uh, on the circuit box in case there's a major surge or explosion around us. It will take that shock and keep our electricity on, hopefully. Uh, and so if you have a surge and a shock hitting the fuses or bolts in your car, it could suddenly stop and ruin your vehicle. To me, it's worth the money to put the shield on. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and nothing, nothing else was going to work, and we're all going to be stopped on the highway. But the issue is it's worth a try. Um you know, you can't testify for something. And then another thing this morning, I'm going off on a rabbit hole. I know that, but that's the way this works. I don't plan anything when I come on. I had a discussion with a brother in the Lord yesterday and it got a little testy. And uh, I said, why are you not, are you are preparing food? Yes, but God, but I said, what about the people that believe that God will feed them whether they prepare or not. And I believe if we have time to prepare, that it's a good thing that we do that. Well, this person said, no, God will feed us no matter what. Well, yeah, God will. If I, if I, if I run out of everything I've canned and stored, of course, at that point, I have trust that God will take over. Well, uh, up on my phone came a thing about solar uh, power for the homes if we go into a period of darkness or off grid. And as I went to go plug something in, I thought I heard him say, Pamela, I can even keep the electricity on in the houses of my children. While everybody else is without electricity, remember in Goshen, uh, there was light. But in Egypt, it was dark. So I can at this point now, because of what I've heard, believe that if my solar isn't working any longer or the sun should go down and I can't get um, the panels to provide the energy into the solar um, generator that I have, that at that point, God can take over, that when I plug something in, it will light up. It will work. Isn't that a thought? I guess you can laugh at me, but I believe that the Lord spoke a word to me. That thought didn't come from me came from the Lord with an issue of reassurance that he's always there. He's always our supply. He's our supply for electricity, food, everything. But we're not 
I don't believe to sit around going, well, God's just going to take care of me. Well, that's kind of like saying, well, I'm not going to do anything because the government's going to take care of me. God will, the government will not. If you want to know who's storing food, it's the government. But they're not storing food for you. They're storing food for themselves. Why is it? Why would they be calling all of these companies that have food for 25, 30 years storage and buying them out? Why is Bill Gates buying up all this farmland and now China is in there helping with a few million dollars where they're um, uh, commingling in a conglomeration of some kind? Why are these things going on? Why is the news not telling us the truth? Why is it that we can't get the truth from any of the represent? Oh, and on my phone came up. Don't forget to register to vote. Whether I vote or not, do I truly believe the person that started out wanting to do a good thing will not be turned by the time they get into office by the people around them and they will become just the same sheep because they don't want to lose their position. They And so they won't tell their people the truth. Yes, we have Michelle Bachman. Michelle Bachman's not in office anymore, is she? Now she's speaking for the Lord. Now we got a lot of people that don't like that she's speaking for the Lord. We have uh, our help is drawing nigh. We're going to be taken out at a certain point. And the words that we left behind us is going to make a difference in some people's lives. I had one, one girl the other day. Well, when we leave, the Holy Spirit's going with us. He's being taken out and you won't ever have another opportunity. That's not true. And so, but you can't tell the person because they're so sold on their beliefs that they're not looking at the word or the congregation that they're with is not up to speed with the truth. And so they're all, they got this idea. Uh, okay, let's uh, look at another scripture before I go off on another tangent. I'm just going through and what the scriptures remind me of, I start going with. And so when you read the scriptures, look at the scriptures and what are they saying to you? as to what's happening today in our world. Okay, let's now look at Psalms 80, 14 through 19. Psalms 80. Fourteen through nineteen. I am in the New Living Translation. I'm starting to kind of like it for reading purposes, not so much for studying in depth. Come back, we beg you, O God of heaven's armies. Look down from heaven and see our plight. Take care of our grapevine. Now, what does that mean? The grapevine, take care of our grapevine. Take care of this grapevine. Come back, we beg you, O God of heaven's armies. Look down from heaven and see our plight. Take care of this grapevine. 15, that you yourself have planted, this son you have raised for yourself. 
for we are chopped up and burned by our enemies. May they perish at the sight of your frown. Strengthen the man you love, the son of your choice. Then we will never abandon you again. Revive us so we can call on your name once more. 19. Turn us again to yourself, O Lord God of heaven's armies. Make your face shine down upon us. Only then will we be saved. This has got a multiple ways that this can be interpreted. Strengthen the man you love. Is it David or is it prophetically Jesus? Uh, then we will never abandon you again, which means they have abandoned him. The grapevine, does that mean Israel? His grapevine, the people of Israel, those grapes. Or does it mean something else? You might want to look that up. I haven't done a study of it, and so I'm not going to uh lead us into that because it says what it says and now let's look at proverbs 2019 a gossip goes around telling secrets so don't hang around with chatterers 20. If you insult your father and mother, your light will be snuffed out in total darkness. Boy, we got some children that are going to be in total darkness, I would say, because they definitely are insulting their mothers and fathers, especially the ones who are running around with guns and causing other people to die. And then we've got the mothers and the fathers that are responsible for allowing this. Okay, now Acts 15, 1 through, uh, 1 through 21. Acts 15, okay. Okay, dokey. 1 through 21. While Paul and uh, Barnabas were at Antioch of Syria, some men from Judea arrived and began to teach the believers, unless you are circumcised as required by the law of Moses, you cannot be saved. Who believes that? Is there anybody out there that believes that, that you have to be circumcised to be born again? Paul and Barnabas disagreed with them, arguing vehemently. Finally, the church decided to send Paul and Barnabas to Jerusalem, accompanied by some local believers to talk to the apostles and elders about this question. Okay, today is about questions. How about that? Even in the scriptures, and I didn't pre-read it. <laughs> Three, the church sent the delegates to Jerusalem, and they stopped along the way in Phoenicia and Samaria to visit the believers. They told them, much to everyone's joy, that the Gentiles, too, were being converted. Okay, we should be joyous. We also have the Muslims, too, that are being converted by dreams. While they arrived in Jerusalem, Barnabas and Paul were welcomed by the whole church, including the apostles and elders. They reported everything God had done through them. Five. But then some of the believers who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees stood up and insisted, the Gentile converts must be circumcised, circumcised and required to follow the law of Moses. Six. So the apostles and elders met together to resolve this issue. Seven. At the meeting, after a long discussion, Peter stood and addressed them as follows. Brothers, you all know that God chose me from among you some time ago to preach to the Gentiles so they could hear the good news and believe. Eight, God knows people's hearts and he confirmed that he accepts Gentiles by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. Nine, he made no distinction between us and them for he cleansed their hearts through faith. Ten. So why are you now challenging God by burdening the Gentile believers, which are Greek disciples, with a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors were able to bear? 11. 
We believe that we are all saved the same way by the undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus. 12. Everyone listened quietly as Barnabas and Paul told about the miraculous signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. 13. When they had finished, James stood and said, Brothers, listen to me. 14. Peter has told you about the time God first visited the Gentiles to take them from a, peop from a people for himself. 15. And this conversion of Gentiles is exactly what the prophet predicted as it is written. 16. Afterward, I will return and restore the fallen house of David or kingdom, which the Greek reads. I will rebuild its ruins and restore it. 17. So that the rest of humanity might seek the Lord, including the Gentiles. All those I have sp I called to be mine. The Lord has spoken. 18. He who has made these things known so long ago, in Amos 9, verses 11 through 12, the Greek version, and Isaiah 45, verse 21, Verse 19, and so my judgment is that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are not who are turning to God. Instead, in verse 20, we should write and tell them to abstain from eating food offered to idols, from sexual immorality, from eating the meat of strangled animals, and from consuming blood. Wow, we don't even do that today as Christians, I don't think. I know they strangle chickens. <laughs> And there is blood in the meat. Verse 21. For these laws of Moses have been preached in Jewish synagogues in every city on every Sabbath for many generations. So then, if that's true, then why do we have churches that are trying to be Jewish? And practice Jewish laws when they're Gentiles. Is that is that really what we're supposed to be doing? I mean, we can enjoy some of their services, but are we are we supposed to try to be like them? No, we're Gentiles. We're not like them. We're engrafted, but we're not like them. I need to fix this. I feel like I'm. No, oh, I feel like I'm down it i still feel that way down in a hole okay uh and then i can also do this i can find it it seems to let's see there we go Anyway, that is our readings for today. Those are the thoughts that God has given me while we are doing this. And what I would like to do is say, are there anyone, is there anyone out there who has not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior? I now give you an invitation for that. And... Let me do that right now. Oh, I cannot minimize this, but I can bring it this way. And if you will uh, realize that receiving the Lord is as easy as ABC. First, admit that you've sinned. B, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. C, confess him as Savior. If you'll say this prayer out loud with me, Heavenly Father, I admit that I have sinned and I repent. I believe in my heart you raised Jesus from the dead, and I confess with my mouth Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I invite you into my heart, Lord, and I'm asking you to forgive me. And I receive forgiveness by the blood of Jesus so that I may be saved. I proclaim that I am saved in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer in the comment section, write, I did. Then go to youandhimministries.com. Tell us in the email or chat section below at the bottom of the website that you got saved and we will send you a Bible or any other help we have available. You will not go on anyone's mailing list. Also, call us if you wish at 833-726-8255 or 833-PAM-TALKS and let us help you find a Bible-believing church so that you can learn about a relationship with Christ. We just want to see that you make heaven. 
And in parting, let us do the benediction, which is, let me pull that up. It is Jude verses, uh, Jude 1, verses 24 and 25. Now to him, that is Jesus, who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand without blemish in the presence of his glory and rejoicing, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord be glory, majesty, power, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. And to you who have prayed the sinner's prayer, I welcome you into the kingdom of the Lord, into the house of Christians, and that you are saved and that I will see you in heaven someday. The angels rejoice, it says, when one person accepts the Lord. You are now coming from darkness into light. And may the uh, face of God shine upon you. The Lord's face shine upon you. That your light has now come. That you will now shine in the darkness around you and lead other people around you to the knowledge and salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. May you be saved, healed, and delivered. And I will see you on the next video and scriptures that the Lord allows and gives me time to go through with you. Have a blessed day this July 8th, 2022. God bless.